Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Adobe Photoshop design series. In today's video we are going to be introducing you to blending options inside of Photoshop, allowing you to do a various bunch of different effects to your objects and your layers inside of Photoshop. Now this doesn't just apply to text like it is in today's video, you can also do it to images or anything like that. So in today's video specifically we're going to be going over drop shadow, so how we can create a shadow effect for some of our objects, and also how we can use Use fill opacity and normal opacity to blend our objects into our scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by adding a simple little fade to this text that I've got here for mobile website so that I can blend it into the background here so I can blend it into the smoke. I'm going to move it down and show you how you can do that. We've got a couple of different opacity um, tracks that we can use to change the look of things. We've got fill opacity, normal opacity and they both do different things. So let me start off by going showing you how you can do it. So what I'm going to do is first of all first I'm going to go ahead and move this little layer here. Now if you want to download the image that I've got on my screen here you can download the whole Photoshop document in the download link in the in the description below and then you can follow along a little bit easier. But for now I'm going to go ahead and select this layer and then I'm going to move it down over my smoke here. Now I don't care that it doesn't look too great at the minute but for now I'm just going to show you how we can do some of these effects. So if you want to get into blending options you've got to do it on a per layer basis. What that means is each individual layer that you have is going to have different settings for it and you can add individual blending options for each one to get various different effects. So let me go ahead and show you how you can do it. So to get into blending options, you need to go ahead and right click the layer and then just go ahead and select blending options at the top. Once you've done that, you will get your layer style interface. In here, we've got a whole bunch of different settings that we can apply on the left hand side along with settings for each of those. In addition to that, you've also got the main interface that we've got open at the minute, and that lets you choose a blend mode, fill opacity, normal opacity, and a bunch of other bits. Now, keep in mind, we're going to be going over these in a little bit more detail later on in the series, um, but for now, let's take a quick look at the two opacity uh, styles that we've got here. So first things first, we have got the normal opacity. So that is going to change the opacity of the whole layer and it's also going to fade out all of your effects as well. Whereas fill opacity is only going to do the fill color, so the inside. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So for now I'm just going to quickly press outer glow to get this little glow here and I've just got some default settings here. If I go back into my blending options and then change the fill opacity, you can see that we now keep the effects that we've got on the side. It just gets rid of the content, gets rid of the fill color, so that will be just the yellow bit. Whereas if I do the normal opacity up here, it's going to make everything disappear when I turn it down to zero. So what I'm going to do for this little effect is I want to blend it into the smoke a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity down a little bit so it fades into the smoke there. And I'm going to leave it like that. So if I go ahead and press OK and then zoom down all the way into here, you can now actually see the smoke going through the text which is quite nice. If we go ahead and move down to our layer over here, you can see we haven't actually got any blending options on there at the minute. If I was to go ahead and add a couple of blending options, I'm just going to add these ones for now, don't worry about any of the settings, you can see they appear underneath the layer in the layer panel in the bottom right. And if I wanted to turn off a specific blending option, it's quite easy. I'd simply just press the little eye for visibility underneath that layer, so I can turn off my pattern overlay, I can turn off my outer glow, and I can also turn off my drop shadow as well. So you can do it from down there, or you can also do it from here. For now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Pattern Overlay and Outer Glow, and we're just going to take a quick look at Drop Shadow. So to add the Drop Shadow, you can do this to any layer, like I said, to jump into Blending Options, and then make sure Drop Shadow is ticked over here. From here, we get a whole bunch of different settings that we've got available to us. Now, when you're working with Drop Shadow, I advise that you go ahead and use the Multiply Blend Mode. Now, keep in mind, we're going to be going over all of these different blend modes in a separate video in a couple of videos time. Moving down from that, we've got a couple of different things. So first things first, we've got the opacity. Now this opacity is just going to be for the shadow, and this pretty much allows us to control the strength of that shadow. So let me go ahead and zoom in down here towards my text, I'm going to move this along, and I'm going to show you that change in opacity. 
So, not the blending options opacity, it's the opacity in drop shadow down here. And if we turn that down, you can see it just controls the strength of the effect essentially. So, how visible that effect is. So for us, I do quite, I do like having it quite high. Beneath that, we also have the angle. The angle is pretty much the direction of the light and where it's going to be casting that light on your scene, which is quite nice. So you can't really see it too much at the minute there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give it a little bit of an offset, give it a little bit of a distance. So if I set the distance to 20 and then the size to 29, if I now go ahead and move this little angle, you can see it's moving the direction of the lights um, with the shadow. So if I have the direction to 30 degrees over this way, that basically means the light is coming from up here and then as such is casting a shadow on the opposite side down below there which is quite nice. So if you wanted to drop shadow directly below the text, you would set this to something like 90 degrees and you get the drop shadow just below it which is quite nice there. Have a little play around with that if you want to. Now you've also got a little setting to the right of this. Now this is global light. What this does is it pretty much links up your text and your shadow with the global light in your scene. So basically if you have drop shadow on a whole bunch of different objects, it's going to maintain the same light direction so it just looks a little bit more realistic. We'll go over that in a little bit more detail later on in the series. So, next setting down, we've got our distance. This is pretty much the distance of the shadow from the object. So if we have it set down to zero, it's pretty much just going to be a bit more of a... Uh, a shadow around the whole edge and everything. So if you want that kind of effect, you just set that down to zero. But if you want to move it and offset it a little bit, you just turn it up. So if I set this to 15, it goes down below it a little bit, which is quite nice. And then if I keep moving it away, you can see it sort of really offsets it there. Now, the way you would do this it, for distance is pretty much how far your object's going to be away from the light, how far you want your shadow to be. It's pretty simple. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at something like this for now. The next thing that we have is the size. This is the total size that you can have your shadow. So if we have this nice and big, you can see it does get bigger. However, it does sort of empty out over time. And that's where spread comes in. So you need to turn up your spread if you're having a bigger shadow. And this has sort of got to work hand in hand. Now, if you have a high spread, and then a low size, you can see it makes it quite full and quite nice. So you've got to vary these two settings and work with them hand in hand to get the effect that you're after. So if I turn the size up, the spread up, you can fill it out, but it doesn't look too great. So what I would do in this instance is simply just turn down the light. If you want it to be a little bit more faded, what you would do is simply turn the size up and then turn the spread down and it fades it out a little bit. There's loads of different things and variations that you can do with this. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over. Have a play around with drop shadow, opacity, and all of that good stuff. This is just a beginning to some of the effects that we can do on here. We don't have to just do it to text either. We can also do it to layers like this little phone that I've got. Once again, if you do want this, you can download it. So let's see if we can select the phone layer. Um, so which one is it? I think it's this one here. That's fine. So if I go into the blending options for that, I can then add the drop shadow and you can add it all around here, which is quite nice. I can add an outer glow. It's entirely up to you. Um, but anyway, guys, that's pretty much everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out.